Good afternoon. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. I am an author, an addiction recovery coach, a life coach, and the host of this show, The Take Your Life Back Today radio show. You can see a video version of this if you go to YouTube under the channel Take Your Life Back Today show or just in the search bar, put my name, Ralph Friedrichs. Breaking free from addiction. For you out there have tried that. It's not easy. Everybody knows someone who struggles with addiction, whether it's alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, gambling, pornography, or something as seemingly harmless as shopping, television, or food. And addiction is a serious problem and serious business. If nothing is done to stop it, an addiction has the power to ruin lives and destroy relationships. Friends, if you or someone you love is trapped in addiction's downward spiral, this video offers truth from God's Word that can help anyone break free and stay free from addiction. So please pay attention, it, because it is a vicious cycle. Many of those bound with addiction have tried everything they know to get free. Some have literally begged God to take away their desire for food, drugs, cigarettes, pornography, or whatever it is that they are addicted to, only to find themselves tormented later by the same pull toward addiction. The problem is they don't realize that there is a part uh, uh, God does, does and there is a part that you must do. Their pass is to say no to sin. The Bible makes it very clear that there is tension between the flesh and the spirit. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to spirit and spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. There are in conflict with, uh, they are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want to do. The acts of sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality impurity and debauchery, uh, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and like in Galatians 5, 17, 19, and 20. Your flesh uh, would love to dominate your life, even after you are saved. Even the Apostle Paul struggled with this. Perhaps you can identify with him when he says, what do I do, uh, uh, what, what I do is not good, um, what I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing in Romans 7, 19. You see, my friends, even though God makes you a, a new creation at the moment you receive salvation through faith in Jesus Christ in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you still have the same old body, and it still leans toward doing things the old pre-Christian way. But God has done his part, but you need to do yours now. In Titus 2, 11 through 12 tells us, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. As you walk in the Spirit daily, God's grace provides strength to say no to your flesh. Resetting your mind is a great way to conquer a lot of that. So, victory over addiction begins with your thoughts. You see, your mind is like a thermostat. Where you set it determines whether you will be spiritually hot, cold, or lukewarm, and it determines whether you will say yes or no to sin. In Romans 8, 5, Paul wrote, Those who live according to the sinful nature have their mind set on what that nature desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. Your words and actions are determined by your mindset. It has been said that when you sow a thought, you reap an act. When you sow an act, you reap a habit. And when you sow a habit, you reap a character. And when you sow that character, you reap a destiny. But notice, it all starts with your mind. Your mind up here. In 1 Corinthians 6.12, Paul said, Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. 
Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Paul recognized that some things have potential to control us and become a stronghold in our lives. Just as Paul set uh, his mind, you also have the ability to set your own mind so that you are not controlled by anything or anyone other than the Lord. You see how that works, my friends? What about Romans 12, 2? It gives this sound advice. Listen up, please. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Renewing your mind by reading and meditating on God's word is like pushing a reset button that resets your thoughts and lines them up with his. It replaces the devil's lies with the truth so that you can say yes to God and no to the pull of addiction. Three lies exposed. There are many who say, uh, once an addict, always an addict. But that is a lie of the devil. John 10.10 10 exposes him as a thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to derail your life, and his plan includes these three lies. One, the first lie is you cannot change. Well, I'm proof that you can. Number two is you are a prisoner of your, own, of your past. I'm proof. No, you're not. And three is you are unloved and unacceptable even to God. And I'm telling you as I sit here, that is the biggest lie. The devil's lies are designed to make you think that your sins, whatever they were, com uh, were committed 10 years ago, 10 minutes ago, have made you unworthy to receive anything from the Lord Jesus. If you fall for these lies, you'll feel alone, isolated, and you will uh, live like a poor, helpless sinner who has no hope of changing at all. The great news of John 10.10 10 is in the last part of the verse where Jesus says, I have come that they might, uh, might, uh, may have life and have it uh, to the full. God's vision for the life does not include bondage to addiction. Here are some powerful truths from God's word that uh, dismantle the devil's lies. Here they come. So, you can change. That old person you said, uh, or the old person you used to be, will uh, was crucified with Christ in Galatians 2.20. You are a new creation in 2 Corinthians 5.17 and uh, are dead to sin in Romans 6.12. You are righteous in Christ in 2 Corinthians 5.21. There, there is freedom from you, for you in Christ. There is no more guilt and condemnation in Christ in Romans 8.1. God has taken care of your sins, all of them, past, present, and future, at the cross. And number three is God loves you and accepts you. He will never leave you or forsake you in Hebrews 13.5 and has given you everything you need for life and godliness in 2 Peter 1.3, every spiritual blessings in Ephesians 1.3 and victory in 1 Corinthians 15.57. So receive God's mercy no matter how long you or someone you love has struggled with addiction. Freedom is possible. And it begins with God's mercy. Paul wrote, at one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. But when, but when kindness and love of God, uh, our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy in Titus 3, 3 through 5. You may fail. But God's love, grace, and mercy never do. 1 John 1, and, uh, 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all righteousness. To receive God's forgiveness and freedom from addiction the, uh, that uh, accompanies us, you can pray a simple prayer like this one right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I confess that I have been addicted to, let's say in my case it was alcohol. I repent of the, this addiction and ask you to forgive me and help me to begin all over again. I confess that I have been bondage to, in my case, alcoholism, and I in, uh, renounce all involvement with it. 
I also renounce the devil's lies and I reset my mind to believe the truth, your truth. I ask by the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit that you set me free right now, please. Thank you for loving me, God, forgiving me, and setting me free. In Jesus' name, I pray this. Amen. So, friends, the choice is yours. God will never force you to do the right things. He will love you, equip you, put people in your path to help you, and even guide you. But you still have to make uh, the choice to say no to your flesh and the voice of te uh, temptation. As you, uh, as you daily walk in the Spirit and rely on God's strength, it will become easier to say no over time. I know it's been years for me. Whatever you do, please do not believe the lie that you are hopeless, because you, you are God's masterpiece. With God's help and the right attitude, you can reset your mind and live free from addiction, but it starts with you. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. And that's in Colossians 3, 1 through 2. Folks, call me at 844-405-HELP. Together we can help each other take our lives back. Be good to yourselves and always be good to each other. Remember, a simple smile to a stranger can help that stranger. Uh, and make their day and probably change their life and you can make a difference in your life. No matter what your addiction might be, mine was alcoholism, you're not going to beat it unless you include the Almighty God because God will pave a new road in your life. Just ask God for guidance and direction and remember, God truly loves you no matter what your